I was a physical education teacher and uh, I taught middle school, high school. My clientele now is 50 to 70 and they act just like middle schoolers. So it's like I didn't even leave. It's really wonderful. The sarcasm and just their outlook on life is fabulous. Hi, everybody. It's Dr. Eric Corum, founder of AIM7. Welcome back to The Blueprint, where we distill cutting-edge science, leadership, and life skills into simple tactics optimized for your busy lifestyle and goals. Today, we're going to discuss how different aspects of pickleball can apply to every part of your life. Our guest, Cassandra Marie, has made an extraordinary journey from PE teacher to top-ranked pickleball pro and the founder of Empower Her Pickleball, a platform that she's using to help empower women and to help them with personal development both on and off the court. And in this episode, you'll learn practical strategies for mental preparation before high pressure events. We're gonna discuss techniques to maintain peak performance over multiple days and the art of building strong partnerships. That's the one great thing about pickleball is that you typically play it in doubles and it's a great way to learn how to communicate and develop strong relationships under stress and just have fun. Cassandra shares how the communication and resilience skills honed on the court can dramatically improve your relationships and personal growth off the court. So let's get right to it. Let's lean in and learn from the best. Cass, you are an accomplished pickleball athlete, an accomplished coach. All around, you're pretty amazing. Let's talk about tournament preparation because it's one thing to go out and drill and dink around with your friends. It's another thing to actually like get into a neighborhood tournament or maybe a big regional tournament. And you've had some success there. How do you mentally prepare for one of these tournaments so you can go out and have fun and be your best? Yeah. So mentally, I think I'm actually a big podcast person. So Mel Robbins is like one of my like all time favorite people on planet Earth. Like if I could ever meet her someday, I think I would just follow her dead. <laughs> I love how she just speaks about life. And I like I turn her on and she just gets me in a headspace that I feel like I can conquer the world. And so in the morning when I'm getting ready, I just have a earbud in as I'm like moving around. And Mel Robbins is in my ear telling me like mm-hmm. how amazing my day is going to be. And I think just having that mindset being pumped into you before you go, instead of, I'm not listening to anything. I got my own thoughts going on in here. Well, those are scary (laughs) sometimes. And so I think I've been doing that probably for the last couple of years with tournaments. And that has been a huge, huge mindset shift for how I like walk into the tournament when I get there in the morning. You and I were recently on a panel at PickleCon and you said that you get up like, if it's an eight o'clock start, you're up at 5 a.m. Yeah, I need a lot of time to get my life together. And so (laughs) I've had a lot of trial and error with prepping for tournaments. And yeah, I need a full hour of just getting up, getting my coffee and just not being rushed. I try Mm. to avoid anything that spikes my anxiety. Being rushed or being late or not having enough time gets me like all fired up. And so anything I can do to avoid that or any type of extra added anxiety on a tournament morning, I'm all about. So if I got to get up at 5 a.m. to make that happen, it's happening. (laughs) Well, you said you're building and cultivating a mindset like as soon as you get up and Mel Robbins is your go to when you get out on the court. And, you know, if you play in a multi-day tournament, hopefully you're playing multiple times a day. Sometimes it can be five or six times. How do you keep your confidence up? I talk to myself a lot and people watching might think I'm a Looney Tune, but similar to what Zane does, which he goes back and he taps the back wall. I used to play with him a lot and I kind of watched him do that. I started to do that a little bit more turn around and give myself like a couple of words like, you've got this, you know what you're doing, you've been practicing, you've got this because It's very easy for little negative thoughts to try to pop in and out, especially when you're tired, you've had a long weekend, you've just got to find ways to pump that positivity back in. So I like to talk to myself a lot. Yeah, there's a great psychologist that always says you're either talking to yourself or you're listening to yourself. And so start talking to yourself, meaning like that narrative gets going. And for me, I'm a ruminator. I end up kind of chewing on thoughts and... You know, I recently had a pretty stressful experience. If if I told people what it was, they would be like, yes, that's stressful. But my brother wisely was talking to me. He's like, Eric, but the outcome hasn't been determined. 
you haven't actually had the meeting yet, but the stakes were really high. Yeah. And so I think it's really important to carry with yourselves that the stakes are high, maybe if you really care about winning, but the outcome hasn't been determined yet. And you're going to feel uncomfortable, but that doesn't mean you can't perform well, right? So talking to yourself, what about momentum swings? Like when you've got the momentum and then your opponent takes it. Oh, yeah, that's always a tough one. I'll be honest. I would love to tell you that that doesn't happen to me, but it does. And it happens in chunks, unfortunately. Roger Federer actually just put out a video a couple months ago. Obviously, he's a like number one player in the world, but he's only, as many matches as he's won, he's only winning like 50% of the points or something like that. So like he was saying it's one point at a time. Like it's one point. It's one point. Mm. It's just one point. And we've been trying, me and my boyfriend, Caleb, he showed that to me. Like, it's just one point. Like, stop thinking about it. It's just one point. That has been helping a lot, actually. (laughs) No, that was one of the best. That Roger Federer talk that you're referring to was him at Dartmouth University. Mm -hmm. And he said it was something like he's won 54% of his points, but it's just that narrow of a margin that's enabled him to win X amount of sets, which has allowed him to win X amount of games. And so the difference between being number one in the world and not being 100th or 200th in the world, it's very narrow. I appreciate what he said is like, when you're playing the point, it's the most important thing in the world. But when it's over with, it's over with. And when I was in football, I don't remember the coach, but I had a coach always say that every play has a lifespan of its own. And then you need to process and move forward. That's one life lived, right? And it's over. Yeah. I was actually on a phone call with a division one college volleyball coach today. And we were talking about this. And he said, that I think there's like 16 seconds between when the whistle blows and a play's dead. And then when the next one starts and you have to win, not just one point. I mean, not a game. You have to win X amount of times to get to the finals. And so like if you're in volleyball, I don't know. It's like, this has to happen hundreds of times for you to be a successful person. So I love the fact that that's what you're doing. Another thing that I don't hear enough about is how do you maintain good chemistry with your partner? So I'm a big fan of talking. I've had people before be like, Hey, you're talking too much. And I was like, Whoa, Whoa, Whoa. We can't play together anymore. Then this is not going to work because I'm not going to stop talking because I think even a paddle tap, you know, just say very quick, hey, you know, we're fine here. Everything's fine. We're good. Just little comments like that, for sure, to the partner, I think just helps keep them engaged. The paddle tap itself goes a long way. And I do it between every single point, whether we're losing mm. six points in a row, it's paddle tap, paddle tap. Because it's kind of like your front, like, hey, maybe that shot wasn't great, but I'm still here. I still got mm. you. I'm with you. And so that chemistry part, I think, is something you can build with your partner. Now, if I'm with someone that doesn't like to communicate, that might not be a great person for me to partner with. You know, I brought up Zane before, but he was one of my favorite people to play with, not only because of his skill, but we laughed, we cracked jokes, we said inappropriate things. I mean, it was just constant humor and fun. And I mean, That is what I love to have on the court is not only having a good partner, but at the end of the day, it's still pickleball, right? We all got into it because it's a fun sport. It's a blast. And I want to have fun. I want to win, right? That's always lovely. But I love to build that relationship where, you know what? Sometimes you just, it's not your day, right? And you just got to be like, dude, I don't know what's going on with us today, but it is what it is today. And just kind of embrace what that looks like. Pickleball players, are you frustrated with performance plateaus? Are you struggling with nagging injuries that keep you off the court? Or maybe you're feeling unmotivated and lacking confidence in your training. Well, you're not alone. That's why we created AIM7, the first holistic pickleball health and performance app that provides you with ultra personalized workouts, mobility plans, warm ups, mental performance tools, and so much more so you can win more, recover faster, and prevent pain and injuries. Our team of sports scientists, coaches, and PhDs with over 150 years of elite training expertise understand your frustration. So if you want to stop plateauing and unlock a new level of performance, AIM7 is the right decision for you. Click the link in the show notes, start your free one-week trial, and download the AIM7 app. 
Then begin your personalized training program and level up your game so you can move, feel, and perform better. So I think chemistry for that, you just kind of got to know what you need from a partner, what could make you perform better. I know for me, if I'm playing with someone that doesn't talk at all, or they give me any type of body language, rolling the eyes, the those type of motions, I do not do well with that. I'm like a delicate little mm. flower. And so um, <laughs> on the court, in life, I'm a total powerhouse. So that's just something I know that about myself. I've learned that. And I try to find partners that kind of fit that chemistry vibe that I'm looking for. That's really smart. You got to know who you're going to work well with. And then it sounds like you communicate that with people as well. Like, hey, this is how I like to play. How has this impacted your personal life off the court, though? This learning to have good chemistry with people, has it impacted your relationships or friendships? Yeah, I think just the communication piece is very big. I think I've learned a lot through pickleball of like, not assuming that you know what's going on. I make a lot of assumptions sometimes of what I think is happening. And like you said, that's not happening. A lot of the times, you know, with your partner, you might be thinking, that, oh my gosh, everyone just watched me biff that shot. Like I just totally missed it. Didn't even strike it with my paddle. And it's like, they're not thinking about you because they're thinking about their own selves and what shot they just missed. And so it's funny how we can kind of almost create that environment or not create that. So I've learned that from the court. And then it's useful, obviously, to apply in the rest of the things that I do. I don't know if it was my wife I was telling this the other day, too. But I don't know, like six months ago, I kind of just came to this realization. I've got this whole story going on inside of my head, right? There are billions of people that also have a story going on inside their head and they are the center of their own universe. Mm -hmm. And when you really kind of stop and think about it, like if we could hear everything that was going on in people's heads, like as they walked by, it would be alarming. And I think it also give us a little bit of compassion that like there's something about this game that I think is going to dramatically help change relationships, improve mental health, build better communities because you're learning to communicate. You're learning to go through the ups and downs with people. And I think, you know, when I was in football, like what I, a lot of the former players, once they don't have that locker room, they really struggle. And this is kind of the new locker room. I see that like everybody can be a part of. That's why like people do CrossFit, right? If you're listening to this and you do CrossFit, God bless you. <laughs> They go to the box so they can eat quinoa with their bros and do their thing. And I'm just, that's a stereotype, I know. But they show up and it's a place that they're comfortable. Right. And I see that pickleball is kind of like that. It's a place where you can show up. It's like cheers, but you're not drinking alcohol on the court. Well, some people do. I was going to say, eh, not all the time, right? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I've seen it. So what are you working on on your own game right now? So I'm kind of what you call like a hybrid pro. So I came in early on about six years ago. I had a goal of being in the top 10. I hit that goal. It was six years ago now. I have not been in there since, but I hit it. And I'll be real. I got in when nobody was good yet and got to the top 10. And I took a screenshot. It's still on my phone somewhere. And I will hold that forever and say, look, hey, I did it. I did the thing. And so now I love competing. I'll compete forever. At least that's my thought now. I just, I really love competition. And so I, right now, training wise, I'm not training nearly as much as I should be to play on the pro tour. However, Mm -hmm. I do what I can. I have my growing business and that's kind of my number one priority. And then where I can drill or get games in, I'm doing that. And then I just have to rely on like, dude, it's in here. It's in here. I know how to play. I know how to hit that shot. And I just have to keep telling myself that even though I maybe didn't get as much practice as the person across the net from me, doesn't matter. It's in here and I'm going to pull that out. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. Training wise is definitely not as much as I should be doing, but you know, I I mean, you're all over the place doing clinics. Mm -hmm. You have retreats. You want to talk about that for a minute? Yeah. So I was a physical education teacher and uh, I taught middle school, high school. My clientele now is 50 to 70 and they act just like middle schoolers. So it's like I didn't (laughs) even leave. It's really wonderful. The sarcasm and just their outlook on life is fabulous. But 
my company that I just created is called Empower Pickleball. And it is all women's camps and retreats for pickleball. And the reason I created that was I thought I saw a place that for women, a lot of the times for in the pickleball space, it's a little bit different than other sports. They're coming in. They've never played a sport before. And they're a little bit older. And so sometimes having that comfortable space of just women without, and there's no offense to any of the guys, you know, a guy kind of hitting the ball super hard at them or they don't know how to defend themselves. And it actually brings them true anxiety to be on court with the guy. And so I wanted to create this safe and welcoming environment for the women that want to get better, but don't necessarily want to be in that type of atmosphere. I can't believe how much I've grown in the process when I'm around all of these really awesome women that have all these cool stories and all these badass things that they've done in their life. And it is just like taking me a level up in my own headspace in life. And I had no idea that that was going to happen. It's just a bonus Mm -hmm. that came with it. But I absolutely love what I've created and it has been a riot and I can't wait to see what is going to happen with it in the future. That is awesome. We're going to put some links in the show notes to your camps and to your retreats. I love what you're doing. I love the impact you're having. I've seen it firsthand how people respond to you. You're an awesome coach and a good friend. And I'm just thankful for the work you're doing, Cass. And I'm a champion for you. So hey, right back at you. Keep rocking it. Okay. Yeah, (laughs) for sure. (laughs) Thanks for joining me today on the Blueprint Podcast. And if you learn something, if this podcast enriched your life, please leave us a rating and written review on whichever listening platform you are joining us from. And until next time, stay curious, stay consistent, and keep chasing excellence.